let's continue on with uh, our options chapter and let's have a small recap. Recall that uh, when we talked about options uh, we had buyers and sellers and we know that buyers are facing a limited loss. All they can lose is the value of their premium but they can experience unlimited gain. And this is important to know when we get to the Greeks. Uh, we know that uh, we'll, we'll see that buyers are long something called gamma. Sellers, on the other hand, have the reverse of what the buyers have. They have a limited gain and unlimited loss because they are short something called gamma. And that's going to really matter when we get to those Greeks. So we can see that we have four positions, basically. We can buy a call which uh, uh, gives us an unlimited gain, or we can buy a put, which also gives us an unlimited gain. We're a buyer of these options. These are considered long positions. And don't get confused between buying a put, thinking that the put is a downward bet, so it should be a short position. We're buying, so it's long. We can sell a call, we can sell a put. These are short positions. So it, the, the long and the short refer to, uh, are referring to the buying and the selling of the option, not the type of option we're buying and selling. Let's get back to some terminology because we're going to throw some math at you here. Recall that K was the strike price. S sub T we'll use as the final underlying price. And I'm, just not, I'm not going to say the final stock price, but we'll say the final underlying price because the underlying could be anything, a stock, uh, uh, an index, a future, a currency, etc. And of course P... Uh, was the premium that we paid. Um, later on, that might get a little bit confusing with one of the Greek letters rho, which looks like a, a, a small letter P, but it's actually a Greek letter. But let's just keep in mind that P right now is for premium that we paid. So, let's look at our four positions in a little bit more detail. We'll grid them out like this so that we can keep them separate. Up here, we will buy a call, and we'll see what that looks like. And opposite we will sell the call and we should see that selling the call should have the opposite payoff from buying the call. Down in this quadrant we'll buy a put and over here we will sell a put. So we need some terminology and some sort of math to figure out uh, what these payoffs look like. So uh, recall the in the money and out of the money uh, discussion we had in part three. We are in the money on a call when the final underlying price is greater than the strike price, or S sub T is greater than K, which means we're out of the money when K is greater than S sub T. So now we're in a position to state something uh, a little more formally. The payoff from buying a call is the maximum of the strike price, uh, sorry, the underlying, the final underlying price minus the strike price minus the premium or negative P. In other words, the most you can lose is the premium and the other side represents what you made. If it's less than the premium, you only lose the premium. It's the max. Selling a call is we simply just put a negative sign in front of that whole thing. So negative and then just square bracket the whole max uh, uh, ST minus K minus P. Now bring the negative sign through. Negative max is a min uh, and in the brackets we have negative S sub T plus K plus P and positive P. So itemizing these and uh, cleaning the formula up we can see this is what we have. Notice that in buying a call uh, we end with a choice of negative P Whereas selling a call, we end with a choice of positive P. And we're going to do an example shortly to see how, how the rest works out. Now, when we buy a put, we know we're in the money when the strike price is greater than the final underlying price. And we're out of the money when the opposite condition occurs. And you can use some logic and think about that, and you'll see that that makes sense. So buying a put, our payoff is the maximum of either the strike price minus the under, final underlying price, minus what we paid, or what we paid. Uh, whatever the max, or, or sorry, the, uh, the negative P, of course. Whatever the maximum, <clears throat> whichever one is greater, that's what we get. Well, we simply just multiply through with a negative sign <clears throat> in front of that formula, and we'll see what we get there. Uh, K minus uh, uh, ST minus P, negative P, is what we had. So, that turns into minimum <clears throat> negative K 
plus ST plus the premium or just the premium. So we'll get the minimum of that. So if the first term is much, much smaller, that's what we suffer. Remember, unlimited loss, limited gain. And this is what uh, this, this bracket is telling us is, is what we have in there. Is, is It's giving us an example of, of what it would look like. So let's try an example. Let's say that our strike price is $50 <clears throat> on the option. Uh, that we paid, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, three three dollars for the option, and that the final underlying price, uh, and this is buying a call, so let's make it uh, higher. Let's make it sixty. So, what does that look like? Let's uh, let's go through the math of of this one and figure out what it is. So, we have sixty minus our strike price, which is fifty, minus the premium that we paid, which is three, or we lose the premium. So 60 minus 50 is 10, minus 3 is 7, or negative 3. We get the maximum of that. So clearly we see the maximum is 7. And that makes sense because the underlying price is higher than our strike price. We should make money. So we get the maximum. Let's see if we get the opposite here. Our strike price is 50 minus our final underlying, which is 60, plus our premium because we get to keep that. We're a seller, right? Uh, or just the premium. So 50 minus 60 is negative 10 plus 3 is negative 7 or 3. Now we should see that this pair is the exact opposite of the of the pair of the buying the call. Buying a call gives us a pair of 7, negative 3. This gives us negative 7, 3. Remember this is a zero-sum game. So if you know the payoff from buying a call, you automatically know the payoff from selling a call. Now let's talk about buying a put. Let's use the same k equals 50, a premium of 3, but this time our underlying price will be $40. And let's do the math and see if this works out for us. So we have k, which is 50, minus the 40, which is the underlying price, minus the premium we paid, because we have to pay that out, or our maximum loss, which is 3. 50 minus 40 is 10, minus 3 is 7, or negative 3. We get the maximum of that. So we make seven dollars, and that makes sense. We bought a put with a strike of fifty. The underlying went to forty. We make money. Let's see if we get the reverse with this formula. We should get negative negative seven, positive three. So we have forty minus the strike of fifty plus the three, uh, or we get the three dollars. Forty minus fifty is negative ten, plus three is negative seven, and we have the three dollars. So we see that we have the exact opposite uh, on this one as well, uh, which we should have. Again, it's important to understand that these are zero-sum games. If we know the payoff from buying a particular option, we automatically know the payoff from selling that particular option. We know that when we buy a call, we're making a bet the price goes up. When we buy a put, we're making, the price, making a bet the price goes down. Thank you.